All right, here comes the Fallout trailer. We're doing this again because I, I just I want another shot at at my reaction to this. I feel like I'm I'm kind of ha- I'm reliving my blue pill days back when Star Trek Picard was first coming out, and I was ho- I had hope, I had hope still, and I think that I'm falling for it a little bit with this show. So let's try this again. Hello there. I'm here to show you a wonderful place. All right, let me get rid of subtitles. By the way, I love Goggins here. He looks great. He's got the 50s style uh, TV show host look. Uh, The lighting here is fantastic for this. And uh, this fits the world. This fits the Fallout world in terms of the vault tech propaganda and stuff like that. He is excellent at having this kind of Americana persona. So that's part of it. They're sucking me in a little with that. A veritable Camelot of the nuclear age. Not made by God Almighty, but the working man. You can be a hero by purchasing a residence in a vault tech vault today. Because if the worst should happen tomorrow, the world is going to need you to build a better day after. I really hate that they're setting it in Los Angeles, though, because that's what it looks like. Um, lame. Super lame. Also, they say, I think I, I saw somewhere where this is supposed to be 200 years later. So this is roughly in the timeline of Fallout 4 and Fallout 3. So it's roughly in that timeline. Now, what's bugging me <clears throat> is if you're setting this on the West Coast, which is, I think, what this looks like. All right. Well, then where's the new California Republic? This is a roughly stable functional society now. Or are you going to like, a you know, you're basically going to say that they've fallen? I don't know. Where are they going with this? I need to know. The mission of the vaults should be important to everyone. See, now this is an excellent point to compare. Remember we were watching that trailer for Exodus, the video game Exodus that Fu Man Blue shared? And in the trailer, he says, humanity has been hunted by the ancients. And we, uh, I have had to make this difficult choice to travel through lights. But, you know, and he's telling us a story. He's telling us a story. What has happened to humanity? Uh, What is his mission? What is his goal? It's, It's sort of pulling us in. It's telling us what is he about? Notice how everything she says here is generic. Everything she says here. Oh, the mission of the vaults is to do good things. Okay, f- well, what? <laughs> but what does that mean? Like, why are you leaving? Where are you going? Who is telling you to leave? Is anyone telling you to stay? It's like, yes, they have a character who's advising her to stay. But what I mean is, is anyone saying, like, you're not allowed to leave? Is anyone saying you're an outcast, you're exiled? Like, that would be good story data to start pulling us in. But they don't give us that. They just give us generic stuff about what she's up to. To come up to the surface one day and restart civilization. Can you tell me what's happened in the last 200 years? Like, like restart civilization. Okay, yeah, that's a broad philosophical uh, desire, but that's not a goal. That's not, that's not a, a goal for the character. By the way, I've sat in a lot of writers groups, you know? I've sat in a lot of writers groups where I was critiquing the work of other writers who... Um, would be writing a character and and I would ask them, what does this character want? And they would say something like this that was very general and vague. They would say, well, they just want the world to be a better place. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yes. But for the purposes of this story, what is the specific thing that they're after? And uh, sometimes, and usually, and I'm saying in stories that were not working, in stories that I felt were not working and I was confused as a reader and I didn't understand where it was going, that was the problem, is that they had this kind of vague, in other words, they were trying to tell a story about philosophical themes, and what they needed to do was drill down to the character level. Because regardless of what your overall mission is, characters are still motivated by their own personal needs, right? Right? So even if their mission is to save the world, if Luke's mission is to save the world from the Empire, okay, but but how is that personal for Luke? How is that personal for Luke? Well, it's personal for Luke because his aunt and uncle were murdered by the Empire. 
That's a specific motive. If you just had Luke saying, oh, I just want to save the galaxy because, because we should be saving galaxies, well, that would not be a good motivation for Luke Skywalker. That's what I'm getting at here. Holy shit. You're an actual vault dweller. By the way, I forgot to say this last time. She is super cute, and I like this actress. I have no idea, though, if she's going to be anything other than just an awful girl boss. And uh, she doesn't seem like a girl boss yet because she kind of seems pretty vulnerable in this trailer, which um, she should be if she's a vault dweller. She should be a little more aware of the dangers. She seems a little too naive for a vault dweller, but she should have kind of a stranger in a strange land thing going on. Um, but yeah, I definitely agree with what people said that like everything looks too clean in the wasteland, which, by the way, is also the problem with Fallout 76. I am. <laughs> I thought all you dipshits were dead. Dude, I am so divided on that. Like, on the one hand, I think that's funny, and I like the fact that a, that a sort of grizzled, crispy, world-weary wasteland survivor is, is telling her, like, I thought all you dipshits were... That's pretty funny because... She's living the hard life, and the Vault Dweller is like a sweet summer child that has no idea what they're in for. That works. However, however, we must consider the pattern, chat. We must consider the pattern. And the pattern is MCU bullshit undermining the tension humor. That's what I'm worried about there, is it's like she's undermined, she could, this could be bullshit, this is a dumb story, and we all know that. Like, like here's the, here's the deal. Bethesda really leaned hard into the uh, jinx, the sort of parody of American culture, the parody of of like uh, the Red Scare and uh, communism and and sort of liberty versus communism, and they leaned into that in the Bethesda games. But my feeling is that Fallout in the original iteration was always meant to be a gritty, kind of scary wasteland world. You know, and so what's happening here is Holly, Hollywood writers, they love, they love subverting expectations and they love deconstructing things, right? So, so I'm just telling you, I have a feeling that they just, they just get giddy. They just get giddy at the thought that like Fallout is a wacky adventure world where we make fun of American jingoism. And it's like, no, it's not. By the way, I seriously hope they never make a Bioshock TV or movie. Oh my God. And they will. They will because they're running out of shit to destroy. They are running out of shit to destroy. Uh, Alex Kurtzman is probably looking for his next scout, that little twerp. Do not ever make Mass Effect. You Hollywood scumbags. Do not ever make Mass Effect. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it from you wacko hack losers. I don't ever, ever want to see a Bioshock adaptation. Ever. Because you will, with 100% certainty, ruin it. You will ruin it with your, you know, if not even with wokeness necessarily. Maybe not even with wokeness. Just you're boring. You're boring. Everything is Game of Thrones to you. Everything is nihilism. Everything is anti-heroes. Everything is deconstructions and subverted expectations and a modern audience. It's like that even without wokeness, you would ruin it. I mean, I'm just a hundred, it's like... To put it to put it more simply, we're boring. We're so fucking boring. Uh, resuming with the trailer. What you're doing is insane. I don't set the world. It isn't like the vault out there. It's big. Higher. See again, nothing about this suggests her character. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, there's people warning her she shouldn't do this. There's people telling her she's going to get eaten. She's going to die. Uh, she, she does go into, like, how upsetting and terrible this has all been for her. What does she want? What is her mission? Who is she looking for? You know, there's so many opportunities with this. It could be a Golden Fleece story. Uh, the Vault is... Dude, imagine if the trailer began this way, chat. You know what? I... I think I'm right now in real time deciding this is going to be a freaking piece of crap. Because imagine if, <clears throat> imagine if the trailer starts like this, the vault, we're going through the hallways of the vault. Uh, 
we see people in ta- speaking in hushed, frightened tones. They're like, we've only got four days of water left. It's like, what's going to happen? We can't let this get out. You know, so, and then her character comes in and says, someone's got to do something. It's like, shut your mouth. You're going to get us killed. Imagine if it starts like that. And then it's like, consider what you're about to do. If you go up there, you know, you know, it's forbidden to leave. If you, by the way, I'm kind of riffing on the Fallout 3 plot a little bit here. Uh, but they're like, uh, if you go up there, there's no coming back. And up there, it's not like it is down here. She's like, if I stay, <clears throat> if I stay, we run out of water or everyone kills each other. What choice do I have? That's a story. <laughs> That's a freaking story. <laughs> you know what I mean? How hard is that? Why is that not in this trailer? Because it's shit. That's why, because they know it's shit. They're dropping all the episodes at once. They know it's garbage because this is a mediocre industry and they're ruining another one. Oh, it's just like, oh, how many of these? How many of these have to fail? How freaking many? How many stupid, stupid Marvel's movies do we have to get? How many stupid rings of powers? How many times do these creatives have to be humiliated publicly? How many times does Bob Iger have to lie and snivel and grovel at his stupid investor meters before these fucking wackos understand this is not working? How many times? <laughs> it's like, it's just, it's maddening to me. But if I'm wrong, and it turns out to be a glorious show, I'll admit it. I just want to start. I, I, I gotta say, I really love the ghoul character so far. He's winning me over. Wait. Practically every person I've met up here has tried to kill me. I'm simply going to harvest your organs. Huh? You need to go home. You come from a world of rules, of laws. You should not be alone. Why did you join? That would be a great moment right there. <clears throat> right there for her to say something that hints at the story. Why did you join the Brotherhood? To hurt the people who hurt me. Now that's cool, and I said that on the last stream, but this is why I wanted a mulligan. Because you know what? His armor, I said this about the first trailer. I hate the way they have that shot of like five of those things walking together. I think that's bullshit Kurtzman track crap where they just copy paste, you know, because they think it looks cool. That's it. Oh, chat, that is the image right there. That This is Kurtzman Trek. This is Kurtzman Trek right here. This is a copy and paste of, like, all the suits. Oh, look, look, there's five of them. There's five of them. If you had played the games, you morons, you would understand that these suits are rare. They are precious. They are prized not only literally to you as the player, because if you find one, you're damn lucky and you, you hoard them, you collect them, you take care of them. But, but in the lore, even for the Brotherhood of Steel, they hoard these things when they find them. That's part of why they're the Brotherhood of Steel. Have I said it lately? Screw Alex Kurtzman, the dumbest man in entertainment. Anyway. Uh, but what bothers me is his armor looks too clean. I mean, yes, yes, it looks correct according to the lore. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it just doesn't look, it doesn't look like it has mileage on it. Well, now that is a very small drop in a very, very large bucket of drugs. <laughs> that, now that's a killer line. And I love that a lot. Like he's, I think I'm saying Goggins is the thing I like in this trailer. I think that's what I'm saying. There's almost nothing else that I'm really loving. It's like, that's what's selling this trailer. It's him. It's him because he's got this great personality. He does absolutely fit the character of a ghoul in this world. Like that's, and he's even hinting at the chems, you know, chem addiction, which is a big like uh, plot element in the, in the fallout games for your character and for others. Everyone wants to save the world. They just, just they disagree on how. Everyone wants to save the world. They just disagree on how. I think I let them slide on that line. But now that I'm thinking about it, that is uh, that is pseudo-intellectual bullshit. 
everyone wants to save the world. No, they don't. <laughs> Not in the wasteland. I mean, I get it. Yeah, he's saying uh, the, the Brotherhood of Steel. Dis you know, he does not come across like a Brotherhood character for me. The Brotherhood of Steel are fanatics. They are fanatics. So, so why is he seeming so nice? I don't like that. There you are, you little killer. I swear to God, she had better freaking earn it. Uh, it's just, if she does not earn that line, I'm just gonna, it's girl boss dreck. But, and by the way, I am saying that I think it is possible for her to be an awesome character. I'm saying I think that's possible if this line is earned. Suspicious. Fu Man Blue says no more relatively comfortable white comfort. Yeah, it's like no more vault comfort. <laughs> that's exactly. Program Masion says, and she brings all her friends. I know she's gonna she's gonna girl boss the shit out of that vault when she gets back. She's gonna tell that that cowardly little fat guy. She's gonna go tell him, <laughs> you know what? You sat here cowering and enjoying all this good food and privilege, and up there people are dying. <laughs> She's gonna lecture them all, give them all this shit. <laughs> well, you know, maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong. The captain could be way, way off the mark on this. I I look forward to telling you whether I'm not. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you loved this clip. Please like and subscribe. And did you know you can join us live every Sunday on the Captain's Cast live show? That's at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, every Sunday. You can join me and the rest of the crew in the live chat as we set sail for more amazing adventures in entertainment, film, video games, etc. And until next time, my dear sailors and starnauts, this is Captain Garrett saying I will see you out there.